hello, 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 happy Friday. So, um, if you guys are new to my page, I'm sure Don, the CEO of She Prints It, and I started to do these new sets of videos because I am excited about this place that we're in as a community and as a community i mean the african-american community that we are being more intentional with our spending with our dollars with our power and how we empower each other but i think equally as we are seeing an increase in people buying black i also see an increase in negative posts and comments about black owned businesses now, let me also note that there's a difference between a negative post and feedback. So I'm not saying that I am experiencing tons of feedback on how to improve black owned businesses, but I am experiencing or seeing a lot of negative posts about black owned businesses. So I've decided that the only way for us to make a difference is us for us to be a part of the change, right? So I've decided that I can't say consistently, but I've tried to come in here. This is my second video on the things that we can do to improve. So I wanted to bring in my good friend Montoya as well to join this conversation. I'm a black business owner. He's a black business owner. He's also, and we're both consumers of black businesses. So I want to have the conversation on not just to buy black but how to buy black because there is a uniqueness in us as a community in turn i feel like there's a uniqueness in how we support each other or do business with each other if that makes sense right so as a business owner i want to share my tips i want my toy to come in and share his take what his experiences have been because there is a way to buy black and why you guys are motivated and committed to creating a lifestyle and supporting your community i want you to also create a lifestyle in how you actually do that um so i'm gonna try to bring my toy on and uh Connecting. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you good. Can you hear me? Okay, very good. I can hear you good now too. Very good, very good. So, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, like, if you guys don't know Montoya, right? He is the inventor, the creator, the guru, the black soccer team of mental dialogue. He is committed to having conversations within our community about our community and empowering our community. And anytime I get like frustrated <laughs> with something that I see on social media that I feel like is causing harm to our community, he's kind of like my go-to, um, the person that I go rant to and say, you know, he has a, a weekly podcast and, I, and I'm always like, Montoya, this is what you need to talk about on the podcast. <laughs> and I do it. I do it because you yeah. bringing it to me. So I appreciate you coming on. And I know we talked a little bit earlier and we like, okay, let's stop and let's bring it to the people. But in that time frame, my take on it, and I don't know if you saw how I titled this, was how to do business with black businesses, right? Because I think there lies the opportunity for us. We don't know how to do business with each other. And so I want to share as a, as a business owner, some of my ask of the community on how to do business with us. But I am all, listen, I understand that there's opportunities on both ends. So I want people to be honest on some things that we can improve on, but it's, this is not a place for just complaining about stuff. Like if we want to see change, guys, we got to have action items. We can't just say, yeah, you know, I, and, and, and just again, uh, just to kind of recap the conversation that you and I had, what spearheaded this is that my timeline is overflow, unfortunately, with 
these negative memes and posts about, okay, we buying black, so let's tell black people to do better with customer service. And, you know, all of this, and I'm in a HBCU alumni group. This is thousands and thousands and thousands of educated individuals all participating. Last I looked, 700 and something comments. The majority of them saying, amen, yeah, they need to do better. It's my one experience. It's my one experience. They're taking these individual situations and they are labeling it across an entire race of people. And so I'm like, you know, yeah, anyway, so what say you? What say you? Well, you know, I'm, my mental dialogue, so getting into the psychology of it is kind of how I always think of it. And it's very unfortunate that as humans, we are quick to blanket um, a lot of things that shouldn't be blanketed, right? Mm -hmm. Like what you're saying, these big all, overall complaints because, and when you and I have talked about it on other shows, we're, we're typically unaware that as a community, we have an unfair standard of one another. We're, mm -hmm. But we're typically unaware of it. So that's why we got to have this conversation is hopefully one to make even, you know, you as a business owner aware or even me as a consumer, if you will, aware, like there's a lack of awareness. So we kind of, as you said, an opportunity. And the reason we missed the opportunity is because we're typically not willing to become aware of the fact that we are holding each other to an unfair standard. Mm -hmm. I think it kind of, but you're absolutely right from the concept of, uh, I wrote a piece about this a long time ago, and when you get cold fries from McDonald's, it doesn't stop you from going to McDonald's. Right. But right. but the unfortunate part with our community, and, 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 and here's a reality to the unfortunate part of doing business in our own community. Outside of growing up in an Atlanta, growing up in a Detroit, which is a lot of, you know, most Blacks haven't grown up in majority Black areas. So the reality is, when you haven't grown up in an area where you may have seen black businesses on the regular, which is most black, most African Americans. So the reality is, so when you start seeing people finally get into business, get into, you know, so you, so you start having limited exposure initially for most of us to black owned businesses. Well, unfortunately, one or two bad exposures, you now blanket the rest of black businesses and you can go to another like myself being from a small town, it, let's say if I if I was one of those persons who, and I, I never became one of these jaded, I, I've always supported us or whatever, but let's say I had become jaded based on the experience that happened to me in South Carolina. Well, I could I could move to Atlanta and I already have an expectation, as you always talk about, of having a bad experience because now in Atlanta, I got an opportunity to go to all these black businesses. Mm -hmm. So I could have went to four black businesses, had no problem, but the one right. I have it in, because of my history with the two bad experiences back in South Carolina, because I only had two black businesses I could even deal with, and they didn't go well. I forget about all the good experiences. Right. And, and now when I talk talk stuff, I talk stuff about all black businesses as if Atlanta has bad black businesses. Right. So that's the psychology of if you wasn't fortunate enough to grow up around excellence or a lot of black businesses so that you could have good and bad experiences. Because the reality with, with other cultures, you have good and bad experiences, but you don't blanket it. Right. For us, for us, if you've had limited experience, unfortunately, if that initial limited experience, you will walk around with the rest of your life based on your initial small experience with the black businesses and never give businesses that chance ever again. People literally go there whole entire life doing it, never realizing it was based off their first or second bad experience with yeah. one business. Right. But, you know, and and so, and I agree with all that, but I also think that, you know, like words are power, right? Words are power. And so, so much of it, like you touched on and, and you and I have talked about before, is that if you go into it with that mindset, because you saw a thread of people saying, that they all have had these bad experiences with black businesses, right? Then naturally, naturally you walk in, you're looking for something to go wrong. And so that's why I always say, like, I'm not saying don't give black businesses feedback. Please give us feedback in person, via email. Most black businesses, you can reach the owner directly. Pick up the phone, call the business and actually speak to the owner. Trust that most of us want to hear 
your feedback because we want to grow and we want to improve, right? But if we took that same energy to post about all of our great experiences, there's been times where I've posted on my page, please tag all of the businesses that you've had five-star experiences with. And it's like crickets. And then I'll see somebody post, yeah, black businesses ain't nothing. And it's like 700 and something responses all engaging in negativity, right? So we got to stop connecting and engaging in negativity. And so when I say how to do business with black people, my first ask to it with an open mind. Don't walk into your business connections or relationships with a closed mind, with that assumption that black businesses have bad customer service, that you're going to have a bad experience. So first, walk in with an open mind, okay? Secondly, have the same standards across the board. And what does that mean? That means that if you forgive McDonald's, like you said, for the ice cream, I don't eat McDonald's, but I'm always hearing that the ice cream machine don't ever work, right? And their customer service is horrible. But if you have patience with McDonald's to finally get that ice cream machine working, however often they do that, have that same patience with us, right? Um, I saw several times within this post that I was in that someone said, I expect black businesses to treat me better than other businesses. Now, indirectly, I understand that. And I want to touch on this. I wanted to have a conversation about this. Indirectly, I understand that because... I do want, I do look at my own people. It's like in racism, right? He's like, man, I get that this white person doesn't get what I'm going through. But when I see a black person share the same thing, it's like, whoa, like, player, you should know. You know what I'm saying? So I, I get it. But I also feel like what we were taught as kids that we had to work 10 times as hard to be equal to white America carries on into as consumers. You expect me to perform 10 times better than any right. other business that you've come across just for you to support me on an equal playing field. You know, so if you, so tip number two, when buying black, please respect us at the same level in which you respect other businesses or at the very least, allow us the same leniency, leeway, or just have the same standard across the board on what you should expect from us. Uh, but what do you uh, think? I would, if I could jump in there, yeah. I actually, personally, and again, and you, you know, we you, at Mental Dialogue, we're always trying to do nuance. So uh -huh. I hope that people hear me out as I explain this nuance. I, I personally, actually, there's a level of leniency that I think I would love for our community culturally to afford to yes. our smallest black business owners, especially yes. if they haven't got to the level of franchising. Some of our black businesses are moving to that to that level, they're franchising, right? Um, but I actually, and again, it's, and some people are gonna hear what I'm saying as though I'm asking to lower standards. If you, I'm gonna walk through this, but I'm, I'm trying to right. lead up that what I'm saying is not a lowering of standards, but don't assume that until you hear me out. So for anybody out here listening. So right. the, leniency, the leniency that I would love for us culturally, if I could wave a wand and say culturally, because you keep saying the key word, you keep saying feedback. You keep saying feedback. So feedback becomes very important if you understand what I'm about to say. This, mm -hmm. this level of leniency. The reality is culturally, Culturally, we while we've had some brilliant black business owners for hundreds of years, like for, for a number, of, like we got examples historically of business owners that have existed even during the enslavement period. Like we have excellent examples. While mm -hmm. that's true, culturally, we're kind of we we've really just now been afforded the opportunity for you to be, for example, yourself, should done. Right. You're probably a first generation business owner, if I had to guess, I, I, you, uh, for your family or or at, at most second generation. At most, generation, for your yeah. yeah. So, so, for, so, I'm just saying that is culturally the opportunity that we've been. You know, not, now we can quote unquote compete on a level playing field, if you will. Right? That's our opportunity, really, to be honest. Only in the last fifty to forty years. So, the reality is, in that, with that being a reality, we're also sometimes um, holding you, Shadon, as a first generation business owner to the standard of a corporation that might have been yeah. around for eighty. So, Absolutely. so 
So that's what I'm talking about. So it so it becomes more important that I give you a piece of feedback than to go complain about you because I compared you to someone to a, 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 a corporation that's had 80 years of systems in place, whereas right. you're still you're trying you're still trying to make ends meet and put your systems in place. And right. one day, with you wearing multiple hats, one day customer service was a little off because. You can't you can't call somebody in to do it for you like the corporation right. can. Right. So I'm getting into these nuances from a cultural standpoint. When we're gonna say how to do business with our own, then the literacy I'm talking about it has nothing to do with lowering my standard for you. It's right. the reality is that if I've had decent experiences with you, then the, the one time I have the bad experience versus me walking away and never doing business again is to say, hey. Shadon, here was the situation, not normally the situation, but I, you know, because right. I know for a fact you want that, you want me to bring it to your attention. Yes. Absolutely. You, might, let me say, you might even know that you, you slacked on that area because you know what was going on in your own life. So you right. might already know before I come to you in some cases, but the yeah. other case could be, the other case could be, this is an area you don't know about. So if I walk away and complain, then you keep having this one leak that nobody ever gave you the feedback for you to go, oh, you know yeah, what? Yeah. I can do something yeah. about that. Go ahead. Absolutely. No, I agree. I mean, I agree 1,000%. And then, you know, just uh, to that point, and I, and I appreciate you saying that because although I know that's the reality, right? Like at the end of the day, we do need a little bit more leniency, but – if we're just going to keep it basic, I'm saying if you if, if most of you guys want to hold us to a higher standard or some of you want to hold us to a higher standard, it's like give us the opportunity to get there. So like what you're saying, we don't have 10, 20 people on staff, right? So in, in my business, for the longest time, I was production, customer service, um, back office. Any, every I held all the positions in this business. So if there was a day when production was really heavy, emails right. may not have gotten answered as quickly right. that day because production was heavy. You know what I'm saying? And now even okay. having a, a team of a few people, a few people, it's still the demand is up because, again, we are moving in the direction of supporting each other and we're grateful. I don't want people to think that black business owners don't appreciate it, but we don't appreciate it being treated as a favor. We don't appreciate it as coming off as you're just waiting for us to do something wrong. And we don't appreciate the narrative that paints this broad stroke across all of us, which leads me to my, my third tip is in order to do business with a black business, it first needs to be a business. And I need y'all to know the difference from a business and a hustle. Because I get these people talking about, like one lady posts something about, I'm, I'm sick of doing business with a Black-owned business. And she was talking about some person who randomly make baskets. And when the, she paid the girl, the lady, to make her a basket, the lady doesn't have a business. She just, you know, knows how to make stuff look cute or whatever. No shade. But she got a hustle where she sell baskets. And you've decided that because she didn't get your basket to you in time, that she's a reflection of all biz business owners. So you have to understand that just the same as I saw somebody in the comments, guys, and I'm going to go back and read your comments so we can engage because I want this to be an engaging conversation. But I did glance and saw somebody say, you need to research our businesses in the same way as you may research another. Google them. If they don't have a Google page or a Yelp page, if they don't have a website or any social media pages, if they post and say, pay me be a cash app because I don't have a website or no other professional means to take your money, that's not a business. So know that when you're doing business with someone, there's a difference between you exchanging funds with an individual that's running a hustle versus you consuming from a business owner. So that's my third act, is to so find an actual business. Yeah, let's peel that back from a psychological level, right? Yeah. And we, we were talking about this a little bit briefly before we got on this Facebook. And so, so as a business owner, I know you know what I'm about to say. I mean, we're well, not what I'm about to say. I know you're going to understand what I'm saying here, but I want to go a little deeper. So 
to a certain extent, most humans are this way. A customer wants what a customer wants. Yeah. Like just most humans are this way. And For so, sure. yep. And 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 because and this is but this is kind of a message. I'm saying this message to us as customers. So mm-hmm. so. So you hear the business owner says she understands that, but I'm just saying for anybody out there listening to me, I just want to get, throw in a psychological perspective from us as customers. So it's natural. You want what you want when you want it. I mean, like you say, it ain't like you it ain't like you ain't ever went to McDonald's and cussed them out for bad fries. Like we do, right. we do that too. We yeah. Know, we just, but but we will. But like you say, Shadon, we will still go back even after the right. bad experience. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, so yeah, if you don't get what you want, so it's not that business owners don't understand that from us as customers, if you will, but the psychology of the hustle versus the business. This is something that I think is, that is prevalent and we have to peel back as a community. Because again, if you go back to what I was saying a few minutes ago about culturally, our opportunity for being in business at most second generation, generally, generally speaking, but most of, the, most of you are first generation, uh, in a sense, you know what I mean, uh, business owners. And since that is culturally a reality, mm-hmm. here's another reality. I'll use this word for the pur- for purpose of this conversation. If you've grown up in the hood, every black, hasn't gro- every black person hasn't grown up in the hood. Right. But for people in the culture that have, here's another aspect that we, we quite often don't think about as customers. So the reality is, if you grow up in the hood, the black market is usually very real in the hood. You know, right. you know what I mean. You got regular business, and you got black market. For the most part, if you've grown up with that as a regular way of business, you for the most part you see them both as businesses, and they are because people are, in a sense, getting money. But mm-hmm. what you're pointing out here, Shadon, is even if you've grown up used to seeing both sides, right. you know, I'm, you know, I'm not being negative when I say black market. It's just that's the term we use, yeah. right? So, so if you've grown up doing business in a store and in a black market, Shadon is saying as a business owner, it is time because now you're going to start seeing her children will be second generation business owners. We're going to grow up culturally where we're going to now have more black people in, I'll say, regular business for the sake of this conversation. Right, so right, right. Market, what you're talking about is a distinction that we as consumers well, not that, and that's what you're asking, that we need to start distinguishing and making a diff, making a, a big distinction because what you can expect on the hustle, what you can expect on the black market, like as someone who used to sell stuff on the black market for a big portion of my life, mm-hmm. the, the market is 50% or better on anything that I'm hustling. Right. Anything that I'm hustling, the markup is 50% or better. So, but if you grew up in that environment, it is sometimes difficult to make a transition on what you're used to paying for something in the black market. And then when I now come to you, Shadon, as a business owner, I've gotten accustomed to a certain price point. I'm just talking about the psychology of it all. Okay. And then when I come to you, then I go to you and I, my thought is, damn, that's high. It is high for me as a consumer based right. on what I'm used to paying. So I, I, I'm just trying to kind of walk through this psychology because it goes both ways. And I wanted yeah. you to be aware of that for Absolutely. me as a consumer. Absolutely. And I received that. I received it. Listen, everybody has a price point. Everyone has a space where they're comfortable with spending. I know where mine's used to be. It has graduated over time. But there was totally time where I was like, I, it's not in my price to- point to pay for this at this time that is absolutely okay i don't think black businesses have any issue with not being in your price point i think the missed opportunity or or what i have seen heard experienced in that conversation is that somehow us not having our price being higher possibly becomes a, a reflection of our race there that and that's the issue in black business, anything that we deem as a negative, which is something out of your budget, is easily deemed as a negative for you, right? Or if, you know, if I didn't respond the way you wanted me to respond, all these things become negatives in your opinion, you automatically associate it with my race when it has nothing to do with my race. It all has to do with it either working for you or not working for you. If something does not work for you, that is 
Absolutely okay. And just real quick, I shared uh, this video the other day inside of one of these long threads of negativity of this black lady. She was on, it was on uh, Baller Alert, and she was sharing her experience at a nail shop. And she went through the whole situation. She talked about how she sat there, how she had to make a decision to not go off because she had an appointment. A white lady came in, didn't have an appointment. They took the white lady over her, right? She breaks down this entire thing. At not one point did she mention the race of the business that gave her bad service. Not just bad service, horrible service. They let her walk out. They didn't even care, they didn't even care for her dollar. That's, she had a horrible experience. And not one time did she mention the race. And guess what? But guess what? The reason that I knew that it was not a black-owned business is because she didn't mention the race. No, no, that's, the, that's, the, that's so beautiful that you're bringing it to the table. Because, again, we're getting into the psychology of how it goes. Like you said, when, when having that bad experience, we're not applying it to our black skin, our black race, which is your point. Beautiful point. Beautiful point, Queen. So let me dig into it, if you will. I want to share this with you as a longtime successful business owner because you are that. So here's another thing that you are up against, again, for some of us who may be used to black market prices or cheaper prices. Again, just bringing that real-life perspective to you. Here's something else that, that's a part of what's going on currently because we are starting to get stronger and push to buy black even more. I grew up kind of pushing it and you know, that's always been a part of my lexicon, but I definitely see, see it growing. But, it, but, it, but the reason we're having this conversation, because as it's growing, you're getting, like you said, these lopsided perspectives. Right. Well, here's another aspect that's coming, that's coming into play that you have to be aware of. So as some of our business owners are finally transitioning from black market to regular business, if you will, mm -hmm. or they're still technicians and still new to business. So here's something that you're up against, you're done. So some of those newer technicians are some that are tr transitioning from black market to above, you know, ground business. So some of them, due to what they're seeing out here, they're jumping in at your same price point without, without understanding marketing, without right. understanding how to create a, a correct price point. So right. some of the backlash that you're seeing is related to someone like myself who's used to, we talked about this, the Auburn Festival, you know, coming to it years ago and getting these cheap little shirts or whatever. So some of it is people like myself who buy cheap, if you will. We're running into new owners who haven't done any marketing, who haven't, you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And so they are, they are in effect, like the little meme said, they are charging $40, $5 for slapping on melanin on a shirt. So you got a lot of new business owners who haven't come to understand that part of business now are entering the market mm -hmm. and it's paying yes but it's happening a lot like yeah, I, 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 I get what you're saying i think that possibly because all this listen we at the end of the day we can't speak for every individual consumer or business owner right but what i think what i realized maybe is an opportunity is like you said because you may be accustomed to shopping the black market when what you said was a great point like that's probably a 50 percent markup a 50% markup is nothing in business, okay? And so we do have that space where a hustler buys something for $5, they sell it to you for $10, right? Because the hustler don't have a website. The hustler don't have a team. The hustler ain't bought no equipment. The hustler don't have a marketing campaign. The hustler's not doing any of those things. So for them to turn $5 to $10, they winning, right? But what when you do understand business, and I think that is a shift in this generation, is that people are genuinely educating themselves on business and becoming not just um, mom and pops, right? But they have desires to become corporations. And I think that is, that's definitely a shift because most of us grew up knowing somebody who did hair out of their house or, you know, had a hustle, uh, self-employed, right? So being self-employed isn't new. But now what's newer is that people are looking to develop corporations establishments they want to be able to uh, be job creators within their community so they're educating themselves on the structure of business and once you understand the structure of business you learn in advance the right way to do profit margins 
And once you yeah. learn how to do profit margins appropriately, you realize that a $45 t-shirt makes sense because in most cases, the common frustration is that, oh, this is the cheap shirt it fades. So if you go in and say, I'm going to come in with a higher quality product and you're buying a more expensive shirt and probably not in because I can speak about this in the t-shirt in the t-shirt game. A lot of people want Bella Canvas. Bella Canvas is a pricier t-shirt, right? But it's a nice quality t-shirt. So you want this nicer quality t-shirt. And I've had this conversation with a few of my customers. They want a nicer quality t-shirt to print on. They're not in a position to buy more than maybe 25 or so to get started. But they're also afraid to charge $20, $30 for it. Like, because they know they're coming up against this negative backlash, oh, $30 for a t-shirt, oh, but you go into a Sean John or, you know, it, 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 the, there's a difference between being a black business owner and being a celebrity black business owner, which is a whole nother conversation. Because if it was a celebrity that was charging you that same amount for that the same t-shirt, you're going to buy it and you ain't going to ask no question. Um, which leads to influence. But nevertheless, mm -hmm. the point is you will spend the money You've been spending the money, y'all buying Gucci headbands that can't cost no more than a dollar or two to make, and they selling it for two hundred, three hundred dollars. So it's it's not it's not a it's I only see, foreign. Like that, yeah, listen, I think it's only foreign, not only. Let me not say that because that's a that's a blanket statement. I think that at times it is a foreign thought process to spend a certain amount of money on a garment when you know that is coming from a black owned business. But when it's a non-black owned business, it seems that we understand and we don't question their pricing. And if we question it, it's only to say, I, I just can't afford it. And we go on. We don't say, whoo, these white people be charging too much money. Or these, you know, we don't ever have that conversation. So again, just tacking on race with negativity. We, this happens in our community across the board, and it and it's not absent in the space of talking about business. So, uh, uh, you're coming through double for me, and I'm coming through with one voice for you. I'm happy somebody call me. Oh, you know what? You're low, so maybe you need to come out and come back in. Okay, so I definitely want to address what I'm talking about here. So let me try to come out and let me bring you back in. Okay. because you are y'all are engaged and i am so grateful um thank you for being engaged let me also just say that this is this is very challenging to have a conversation like this as a black business owner because there is this uncomfortable fear that me addressing these conversations will have backlash on my business right but i have to push past that because I want us to be better for each other. I want to be a better business owner, and I most definitely want you guys to have a better experience with my business and every other Black-owned business. So the conversation is absolutely necessary, and I hope you guys are taking this and sharing ways that we both can do better, businesses and consumers, um, because it's not in the effort to judge or degrade or, or anything like that. Um, let me see if I can get my Toya back. All right, can we hear you now? Yeah, you coming through one? Yeah, it's coming through good now. Okay, very good. Go for it, my toy. All right, so the example you just gave, there's nuance in it that I would love to, you know, let's try to peel back. Okay. Okay, so, because you gave a perfect example. So like you said, the sister that comes to you and says, you know, like you said, wanted the quality shirts, and then, and, and uh, you know, he or she is afraid to charge the $30, like you said, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's a, I think that fear is valid. And I, it's not that you don't think it's valid. You understand why, where, where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. But this that is a perfect example of um, that individual has not positioned themselves to get what Sean John gets in the store. The reason we know Sean John is because there are commercials that have enticed me if I want to, I don't buy Sean John, but if I, I used to, so I'm not front like I never did it, right? I'm right. You know, cheaper than that now. And I never bought them. I never, I never was a buy expensive stuff. 
but I like some of the Sean Dunn stuff. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. So when I'm up to go to the mall to get my new Sean John shirt, Sean John has put a lot of money into convincing me to even go seek them out at this mall. So yeah, I'm not at the mall questioning the price because of the marketing that was done prior. The mm -hmm. individual coming to you for a custom shirt, that's why they're coming to you in most cases, right? So they're getting their custom shirt. And like you said, even though they're asking for a little a higher quality, which means you have to charge them a higher price, they the reason they, they the reason and I'm saying some owners don't understand what I'm about to say. Some will do the thirty dollars without understanding how you get how you get thirty dollars for your shirt. Like this shirt I wear right here is from my best friend has a, he's one of my his hat and the shirt moneymotivation.com um, if you will right. This mm -hmm. is my sponsor. I get a lot of clothes from or whatever. I can't. This is my best friend. I can't afford his clothes. I can't afford his clothes. On Black Friday, he does a fifty percent off. He's my sponsor, and he tells me as his friend, "You don't gotta buy nothing. I send you everything. I want to support my friend, so I go support over one day that my fifty dollars will get me three shirts." Right. But I'm, I'm reason I'm just even kind of pointing it out, and it's and again, I agree with you. There are plenty of uh, like yourself who are looking to become corporations. So the reason I think it's so worth having this conversation is because it's time for us culturally to understand and allow people like yourself to move into that space. Right. But, but culturally, psychologically, we're holding it back because we are, like we were talking about earlier, we are making the mistake of comparing you to the basket lady versus you're in, in business. So I'm just saying, right. we, we have to walk through this culturally and get to a, a, a better mindset on, for example, Washer Dunn might charge $45. Here's where some of the issue comes in at, though, just to kind of, again, this is part of the cultural mm -hmm. transition. Part of where it comes in, though, is, like, for example, my best friend, I'm not going to see him at certain things because he decided on being a premium market clothing line. You know Correct. what I'm saying? So because of that, there are certain things he just will never, you will never see him at trying to right. push his clothing line because he, prior to starting business, he decided, you know, the three levels, right? Discount market, middle market, premium yeah. market. Right. Uh, so we have some of our newer business owners, not all of them, but there are some newer business owners who unfortunately are pricing and trying to sell to all three. Listen. So that's, so that's where the bad name is happening to the extent that it's unfortunately being applied to somebody like yourself because there yes. are some people who are trying to sell to everybody with a premium price and done no marketing. So right. that's, a, that's the that's some of the customers pushing back saying, oh, for example, that mean that $45 doesn't apply to you, but it does apply to the yes. person who did just slap melanin on a shirt and just started charging that. So it right. does apply to you. Just giving it does, but yeah, no, it, it does, and I'm so glad. It's like you read my mind because you you just pulling me right into my next point every time. But I think that as much as a we absolutely have to know who our target market is, right? That is essential, and I think that's an opportunity for us as business owners because a lot of us do go into business like I just want to sell to everybody, and that's not how it works, right? Everyone wants to feel like. It's a personal experience. So you have to figure out who that client is. Who are you talking to, right? And um, and I do think that we have we are in a place where a lot of people know exactly who they're talking to. I think social media clouds that because you think that she's talking to you because you chose to follow them on social media. But your following someone on social media is not a reflection of them targeting you so to speak, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, so it doesn't mean right? so on the consumer side, you have to also understand that I like this brand. I love their messaging. I love the quality. And I clicked on the website. That is not in my budget. And accept that that's, and that's all that it is. It's not that they intentionally try to pull you in and entice yeah. you for something that's not in your budget. That's rarely what's happening. It's, I think we're, we do, we are learning. Here's who I'm targeting. It's just that, it's just like for me, I target, I target women-owned businesses, and this year we put more emphasis in, in targeting corporations that are led by women, right? 
I still lovingly get a lot of customers who just want to buy one or two shirts. But that's not what my market, that's not who I'm targeting in my advertising. That's not what any of my marketing focuses on anymore because it used to, right? That's not the focus of our marketing and our engagement. We talk a lot about bulk selling, about bulk ordering, promotional products. So clearly our verbiage is for big businesses but or, or businesses as a whole. But we still get people who just want, you know, like, listen, I, I just need one or two shorts. Shirts, yeah. I heard your stuff is good. I want you to do it. We still value you and appreciate you for that. But you, you know, but that doesn't mean that I marketed to you specifically. And so sometimes people are not marketing you to marketing to you specifically. They know that they have a premium product. She knew her shirt, even though it just said melanin, was a premium product and her uh, markup was appropriate for the person who would buy it. Because you so, won't buy it doesn't mean that her markup isn't appropriate. Okay, so let me give you this perspective as a long time black consumer, you know, even for my little small town, 20% black town, I was on this as much as I could be, right? So I've been buying black for as long as I could wherever I've lived. I've had a, a regular bookstore that I went to that was ours. I went to a regular, that's just who I've been most of my life. So right. what I will tell you in my lifetime, I am seeing what I do consider, I'm going to be honest with you as a consumer, a mm -hmm. now overvaluing of, well, I'm going to tell you what it appears like, so you can talk about it, but I will yeah. tell you lifetime, I feel like I am seeing an overvaluing of a lot of products. And I'll give you an example of what I mean, and you know, you can come back with it. So, yeah. like here in Atlanta, obviously, I, I knew I was coming here as soon as I got a military, because I wanted to be around us, right? So, right. being in Atlanta, um, it disturbs me that there are no cheap eats, black-owned cheap eats in Atlanta. And 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 and, that's what it, and, and I, obviously I I'm the only one person, so there may be a couple that you know that, that there may be some out there that I don't know about, right? But I'm saying right. in general, in general, um, it I feel like it used to be. I'm talking about. I'm, I'm saying there was a market that was that market that used to be there that I personally start am starting to believe feel like is less and less there to. Where, where I'm seeing restaurant pricing going for. I'm just using the restaurant industry as an example of what I mean. And so for the most part, if I want to eat out, which I try not to, but when I'm starting eating out, you know, the little, little that I do, um, eating out and getting full for $10, I'll tell you, it's hard to do in Black-owned restaurants, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember that ever being the case. And I've been here since 2003. But now... That's become a lot harder. I just, for example, I went to, and, and the vegan market has changed a whole lot. You know, I've, you know, a lot of people are going vegan now. So just, just the other day, I went to one of my favorite restaurants, or whatever. But I, I've been with them as their price points have continued to increase. Uh huh. Um, so I went to one of my favorite restaurants. The food's slamming, slamming. But something that I would have paid twenty dollars for just three years ago is now thirty five dollars. Right. So I go to them once a year. If that yeah. versus at twenty, I'd have been going once a month. Right. It's, Listen, first, just, first of all, that that math is off. If you can go once a month at twenty, you can go more than once a year at thirty five. But I get what you're well, saying. Let me, let, me, let me answer that, though. Let me answer that. Let me answer th that one example. Okay. So what you, what you have to understand in my budget is that once a month at 20 might be the one time I'm going to do 20. I don't do 20 all month. So I get what you're saying, but I'm saying that it, it, it should be more like at 20, I can go every month. At 35, I can go once a quarter. But it shouldn't be right. once a year. Well, but I'm a, so I'm just saying, if I'm if my splurge once a month is twenty dollars, well, when I go thirty five once a month, next month I don't get to do no splurging. Like you, that's what you. Right, that's, that's what, what I'm saying. Exactly. That's why I say it becomes once a quarter, not once a year. Needless to say, that's that's. I'm listen, saying, I want to I want to splurge twelve times a year. If I go to this one restaurant, I get to splurge just a few times the whole right. year. So I receive that, it. Affects your budget a lot. Listen, I, I receive that, and I'm not I'm not knocking it. I'm not because it's your budget. Nobody can tell you what to do with your budget, okay? And how to use your budget.
But what I need people to take into consideration, consumers, is that if their price went up, nine times out of 10 is because their cost of goods went up. So I, my prices go up when my cost of goods go up and when the market goes up because inflation is real and it's happening to us every single day. We just low key look past it. But you look at your cereal that used to be, you know, a, the 30 ounce or whatever, it's the same price now at 20 ounces. See, it's just that we haven't figured out how to play the game exactly the same as some of these larger corporations. Because in a larger corporation, the experience is usually you still paying $20 for it. You're just getting half of what you used to get. And people tend to look past that versus we're like, we don't want to shortchange you on the portions in the food, for example. So maybe they don't want to shortchange you on the portions that they used to giving you. So they like, okay, well, we just got to mark it up because these costs of goods are gone up. They paying more for the same supplies. I'm t and I know this to be fact. I mean, there was a time where to get a dollar t-shirt was the like very common. These days, you can't find, you can find a dollar t-shirt, but it's going to look like it's a dollar t-shirt. It's going to shrink in 2.2 .2 seconds. You sneeze on it and it's going to go from a large to an extra small, okay? Just any sign of moisture. Um, so now you have to pay more. Everything, the cost of living is going up. Inflation. I know you understand this stuff. So I think consumers don't take that into consideration that, um, I'll give a great example. During the pandemic, everything that I had to use, supplies to process orders, had to be shipped in because all warehouse uh, all warehouses were closed for pickups, right? So I have suppliers that I use locally that I get my blank t-shirts from, that I get my vinyl and my paint and things like that from. I had to order everything and pay shipping for everything because these companies didn't give me a discount on shipping. So if I had a customer that wanted to buy one t-shirt, I had to order it pay shipping on the cost of that one item if it was a color or something random that I don't keep in stock. So my profit margins are dropping. If I would have, I, and I knew I couldn't increase my price because consumers are like, no, nah, how all of a sudden your stuff costs, you know, went from $30 to $40 and I got to pay shipping. So we got to eat, we got to eat that and only for, for so long it lasts until we end up having to close down our businesses. Yeah, and that's the and, that, and that's the difficult part with our companies, you know, again being first generation quite often and already, you know, we you know it's a whole other conversation to fight how 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 it's more difficult for y'all to get funding in comparison to others, right? So that's a mm -hmm. whole nother uh, or whatever, because a lot of times, in a sense, some cultures have that to their advantage to be able to avoid some of what you're talking about. So I absolutely understand that it's an absolutely reality. And you all, like you said, you already know that I understand that you pay the same price now. You, what used to be for a 32 ounce Gatorade is now a 28.5 ounce Gatorade. Like, you know, right. you know, I watch that kind of stuff and pay attention to it. Um, and, you know, and I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you some, as someone being aware of it, mm -hmm. I, I will just tell you personally, I see the market being higher in like, like, a $15 increase and it's actually, you know, just using this as an example, it's actually a smaller portion than it used to be. And in, in that short period of time, that becomes very noticeable because as you said, the major companies do it slicker. They do it in a, yeah. a gradual, smaller. So it doesn't feel that way to me as a consumer that, oh damn, I only got 28 and a half ounces versus I used to get 32. Like that's done. And I'm not trying to make them better. They're, they're, they're usually bigger more systemic in the way that they can do it in a gradual way. Right. The, the individual business owner may not be able to do that. Unfortunately, it's going to be hard for a consumer to look at it that way when it's when it's a big jump, you know, in a in a, you know in a three year period because that is a huge jump or whatever. And I just feel like, and, and and maybe what you're talking about is maybe what's going on with the restaurant thing, you know, to a certain extent. Like I love supporting us, but it is becomes super expensive in the restaurant arena. I see Michelle said, um, you have to cook at home. And and I just said, I don't, it's not somebody, I'm not someone who goes out and eat a lot, but even the time that I do, I still have a budget and I just go find my budget. I just hate, it is harder for me to find us 
in our budget now. That's just harder to do, and it used to be that hard in the past. I'm just giving that as an example. Yeah, and I, I don't think it's, it's, yeah, in some cases, in some cases, in what area you in, again, that's the, that's the God giving resource of Google, okay? It exists, and social media. Like, you can totally just go into one of these black groups and say, hey, I got $10 to spend, $20 to spend, and I want to support a black-owned restaurant. Tag some. And I I assure you, I assure you, you will, somebody will tag, there'll at least be 10, 20 of them that will be tagged for you to go support. So, like, it, again, it's, it's not across the board. I can think of a couple food trucks, you know, but if you want to sit down, you got Harold's Chicken, you got Nancy's Pizza, you know, if you want... If you want vegan food, there's a Green Love Kitchen over here in Lithonia that's under $20. So you just got to, you have to seek out what you're looking for. But I want to get to my next point because I want to, uh, I love this conversation, but I got to get back to work. Um, my my next um, thing is, or my ask of Black consumers is when doing business with Black business, respect the Black business policies right just the yeah, same definitely. as you respect anybody else's yeah, yeah. just the same definitely. as you respect anybody else's and so like for me i'll give a couple examples there's times uh there there's times when someone uh dm me there uh, said they want to talk to us about some promotional products we said great and she sent back her business calendar and told us to go on her calendar <laughs> and pick a time that we can call her to talk about products. That's not how that works. You wouldn't do that to Custom Ink. You wouldn't do that to Vista Print. You wouldn't do that to any other print company. Now, I don't. I wouldn't say that she meant it with malicious intent. But again, we have this, um, this complex about Black businesses that they're inferior, that um, they need us to do them the favor of supporting them and buying from them. And so if you want my money, here's what you're going to do to get it. No one else has that same standard or expectations. And then if we say, no, we're not going to do that, because in all transparency, there's several times where I have bent my rules to accommodate consumers, one, because customer service genuinely matters to me, right? Like, I genuinely want to provide an amazing experience. Uh, but two is because there is this fear that if you don't give in to the black consumer, that they're going to go and tell everybody how bad your business is, how horrible you are, because you didn't break your rules for them. So I have someone who wants me to go on her calendar. I have somebody who says, I ask, do you want shipping or pickup? They say, no, you could bring it to me. Never said I, that was an option. I've had customers. Um, demand that I lower my price for them. I have people demand that I lower my minimums for them. I have had... I remember the one where you had somebody wanted to ret return a custom item. That's yes, crazy. I had somebody that said they want to return their order. That's custom. We agreed, even though we don't do this, we agreed to refund them, bring it back. That's fine, refund. Then they said, no, we, we use them. We get them all the way. The people in, uh, so uh, what you, but you want me to refund? Listen, <laughs> so all I'm saying is, and let me also say, even though I'm sharing these examples, 95% of my clients are black women, 90% of them are awesome. Okay, 90% of them are awesome. It's, it is the few. It's a few, just like the your experience with black black business black business owners is usually the few. We make them the many, but that doesn't mean that we don't need to improve. So my last act is that whatever that black business says their rules are, their policies, their returns, their, their structure, whatever their structure is, go with that. Stop trying to tell us, well, you should have did this, you should have did that. We had somebody email us telling us how we should have. Now, feedback is different. We're open to feedback, but don't tell me exactly how to run my business based on what's convenient for you. 
Right. Because we want to improve, but we're not building a business solely around what's convenient for you because you want me to drop it off because you want me to be available after midnight to answer your personal DMs. Like that's that's unfair, right? You know, we talked about that. In place for a reason. And we want to disregard it because you're black, because you look like us. And like you said, the reason you're putting the policy in place. I just need to charge. Go ahead. The reason you're putting the policy in place is to ensure you do good business. And so sometimes consumers will make the mistake of expecting you to jump through hoops for them not realizing you're now about to create another issue for another business owner, but had you adhere to your policy, you end up doing great business for everyone. And so that's a big reason that our business owners have policies in place that have to be and must be respected because as I was, I don't know if you heard me saying this, Don, but people will have you individually do something from you for them and now create another issue for another consumer right. that they're not worried about. You you welcome the one on one. Can we d figure this out? But yeah. people are being ridiculous and assuming they should get way more than they would net. They would they would just literally go to the customer service desk at a Walmart, and generally speaking, accept the policy. They're you know they're yeah. the unique one offs. So yeah. we're not trying to be ridiculous here and act like they're not. There may not. But usually the one offs are when the business owner too is saying, okay, we did something. Let's see how we can work this out. So that's usually when the one-offs are happening. But what, what we do to black businesses is just a standard. It didn't go the way we wanted. And now we're going over the top in what we expect from you. So that right. is a great, I think, a great way to close this thing out. You know what I'm saying? Giving people pointers on how to do business effectively with yeah. us. And, you know, so I think that was a great point. Yeah. Well, this was amazing. I hope that some people found this to be helpful. I saw a lot of comments. I just can't see them anymore. And I did want to kind of go back through them. But, you know, at the end of the day, Montoya, I know you feel the same. We're in here because we care. We're in here and we're in this conversation because we want us to operate in excellence. I do not pretend that I don't make mistakes as a business owner. I do. I, I could identify very clear, clear times where I miss an opportunity to truly engage with a client in the way that they deserved. I, I don't make excuses for it. I know that's because I'm wearing a bunch of hats in my business sometimes, but I don't make excuses for it, right? When people give me feedback, I try to operate in that feedback. Um, so know that we hear you. We hear you. We don't, as a business owner, I don't not respect what you're saying. I do. But if we're going to have these conversations, like Montoya said before, we can't make these blanket statements. And we need to learn how we've been taught a lot of things. And one of the things that we were taught growing up is to not air our dirty laundry, right? And I don't know how we get away from that because we, I feel like social media has really pulled us away from that. And so I say, I'm not saying don't let that business know that they have opportunities. I'm also not saying don't do a review, a bad review, because there's some of us that are out there that are operating poorly. And you 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 let them know that they're operating poorly and they continue to operate poorly. When that happens, do a Google review. Do a Yelp review. Let people know about that specific business because we do need to weed those out. Right? You don't want that now to speak for your business because that's what and people will do. My so, business. So, so yeah, yeah, that page, you're you're wanting a review. Take the extra step versus yes. just going to social media and talking shit and applying it to excuse my language to all the all the different businesses. So absolutely, you absolutely because it like, does it's not all of us. Good. People need to hear yes. that you're it's not, not all of us. Business. So right. you know, right. Don't air the dirty laundry to social media. Go directly to that business. If I if I have missed an opportunity, here, here's my plea to those of you in here that support me. If there's an opportunity that I miss in providing you exceptional service, first, forgive me because it wasn't intentional. Second, let me know. 
I have a personal email for my business. It is sherdon.reynolds at sheprinted.com. If you've ever done business with us, when we email you to ask for a review, one of the things that we also say is that if there's an area of opportunity where we could have made this experience better, to email Sherdon directly. Yes, I, I'm talking about because I, I don't know what I don't know, right? So if I don't know that there's an opportunity, I'm, I'm going to keep operating that same way. And some people going to keep operating that same way even when they know, but at least you can say, I told them they right. didn't change. I'm not spending my money with that individual. That is that single individual and that is not right. a talk direct about reflection of our one individual. Think, talk junk about that one individual. And before you go, Queen, I'm just, I'm just doing it on the spot real quick. Um, I actually need to get a buck by on my shirt. If you do, I don't know, do you, do you, it was a long time since I did business with you. Uh, when I have to resend the logo, I'm just asking real quick. I know I probably should call you, but I just yes, want to do it real please quick. please resend the logo. I have to resend the logo. Oh, man, okay. Because I, I just want to... Uh, somewhere deep down in the jungle. Yeah, but you I'm know, gonna, it's been a minute. <laughs> okay. I'm a, yeah, I, I want to find out. Yeah, I'll talk to you. I want to find out what the bug price is. I know last time I bought just a few. So I want to get, yeah. like you said, more so that I can get it, you know, down like you talked about. Get it down. Absolutely. You got it. Right, you got you. it, King. Say less. I am I am here to serve. Okay. Thank you guys so, so, so much. I mean, y'all are engaged. I see y'all in here in this comments. Uh thanks, Kings, and proud of you, sis. Love you. We look, I love all of us. Uh let's see yeah. if I anybody else I treat a business you. like a I got um Stephanie. You know Stephanie. She said Yeah, um, that's that's Stephanie listen, called. another queen. Listen, yes, right. this other queen, and Natasha said, treat a business like a business, not color, no color involved. Let me tell you, treat a business like a business, no color. Now, that's a shirt. That's a shirt right there. Listen, you, might, you might see me in that shirt tomorrow, okay? <laughs> I like it. I like it. I need to tell you the comments right, I got on my phone. Yeah, what? Stephanie says, uh, right, because if you don't like one target, you go to another. You don't stop going to target. Um, I got somebody that says, um, Natasha says, this is when the problem goes to the consumer, not understanding quality. That was just good. Yes. You know, just uh, Michael Suller, you've heard of him before. He yeah. says, sound like, it's something we were talking about earlier. He says, sound like an undervaluing of black as a brand, which is what happens outside of our community. It should not happen within, but yes. it does. Oh. Very, good, very good point there. Let me see if there's any more. Michael says another one. He says, he said, it is challenging and it is a tough conversation, but that's why we're listening and engaged to, he's talking about us having this conversation. Very on the good. Top says, um, as, as consumers, we also have to understand that small businesses are not ordering at the same level as Target. Correct. The price reflects what they have to spend to supply you. Good point. Very good point. Um, Michelle Absolutely. Dyer says, mm -hmm. um, the popularity of the restaurant. I think we were talking about restaurants. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we got a lot of great comments. So those are what, some um, great comments. Uh, yeah, the, Mo the Smoke King said, so proud of you. So I'm assuming he's talking about you. Uh -huh. Tell the yeah, no, I, re I receive all of that. And I, and I think it's amazing. And I, you know, again, just one last point before we go, when you talk about profit margins is um, our markup is usually a lot less than what it yeah. should be. Remember, I said this one time before, so talking about this specifically, the average pro profit margin, which most people don't realize, is about 36% in business. So whenever you're offering a 10% or a 15% discount, because sometimes you do, we as consumers must understand, you, somebody like yourself, probably just cut your profit margin in half. We're not thinking of it. We're happy about the 15%, but we're not thinking her right. whole margin was only 36% yeah. from the beginning. So 15% from 36% is leaving yeah. you only leaving you only 15% yourself. And we then gotta, also understanding it. profit margin. So your profit margin is a reflection of the business as a whole, right? Yeah. So profit margins, that's your annual take home should be on the average. That should be the profits of the business. That's minusing supplies, uh, rent, utilities, cost, cost of other goods, website hosting, company vehicles. They're saying once you pay for all staff, all the things it takes to run your business, you should be able to take home 36%. That is not, I do want to clear this up, that is not the percentage that you mark up your good. Because your good 
still have to pay for all of that other stuff that I just listed, right? So don't look at it and say, T-shirts only cost two dollars. She and she said it's supposed to market up thirty six percent. That means it should only. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, yeah. Is our, just for the sake of education. That yeah, is smart. the doing home it. when it's all said and done. Everything in the space is paid for, and so to that point, like you said, when we do sales on top of that, that money is then coming out of our total profit because all of these other pieces of the business still got to run. Let's do one more point on that yeah. math because I think it's good education. Let's just, I'm, and we're going to just use the easy numbers because we're using them. So people also need to understand why they say on average it takes a business five years to make a profit. So let's take that same number. So whatever 100% I put in, if I only kept 36%, well, I'm still down 70% in the first year right. based on all the money I put in. So people a lot of times also think just because you're doing business, you're making money. So your 36% after everything's done is still a 70% loss on the year. So if you are successful and able to maintain the business every year at 36%, which is no guarantee, you may have a low year. But let's just say, so using that number alone, at minimum, you're three years before you ever break even. You spent three years of hard, sweat, tears, work, just to say, I made a dollar. Right. After everything I've put in. So yeah. that's why, you know, a lot of times moving from black market, having those 50% and higher markup, we don't have a concept of turning a profit five years down the line with our business. Mm-hmm. Long corporations, they, they will go into a business knowing it'll be 10 years before we finally make our money. Like, that's right. not something that we're prepared to do, not as a negative, it's a reality of being. 50, 60 years in, in allowance to even be in business. 100 yeah. years from now, your grandchildren can do that. We can buy this business knowing we're not going to make a profit for 10 years. Most of us are not in that living experience right now. Correct. Just another good learning opportunity. Yep, absolutely. And, you know, uh, listen, I know to close the close of the close is <laughs> that... <laughs> I'm done. Thank you, Queen. Is that you know we also don't we usually don't even pay ourselves salaries, guys. So I know you think yeah. we out here stunning and balling and you know fronting on you and that we we using your money to pay for you know the little name brand stuff or whatever you think is happening. Know that most of us have a salary, even when we paying for employees, we still don't take a salary because we trying to make sure that the business grows and that is blossoming and that we can employ other people. So just, you know, it's, it's so much different than what it is. And I'm just grateful that we get to have this dialogue. I'm grateful that um, you guys hung in here with us this whole time to genuinely listen to the conversation. I'm grateful for you, Montoya, to always just kind of jump in when I be in my, you know, in my feelings, like we need to talk about this. Because we genuinely love our people, y'all. It's so real. This love is so unconditional. Um, so I'm just I'm just grateful. I, I hope we get to do this again soon and have several conversations. If y'all want us to talk about something specific, please tell us so we can address it. And I appreciate you as a passionate business owner still willing to hear it you know what I mean? Like you know, cause some I, some some that I've approached right with the feedback are sometimes so offended that they end up being that one. I don't even go talk junk about them. I don't do the review. I just don't go anymore. But right. some can't receive the feedback as well. So I appreciate you as passionate as you are. You're still able to say, "All right, let's talk it out." Even if I disagree, let's talk it out. So I appreciate you for being able to do that. Yeah. Thank you. Love no, you. Thank you. All, All right. right. Answers that you think. Tomorrow, oh, yeah, today, that you think. Yeah, All tomorrow, that. 2 a.m., Janelle Monet says to cancel hip-hop. What says you? Find me on the myth Janelle Monet says cancel hip-hop. Lord, cancel tell them how to listen in on that, because I got to listen to that. I know, absolutely. You can go to the myth of dialogue Facebook page. It'll be at the top of that. Uh, you go to my personal page, Montoya Smith, or Blog Talk Radio, and look up Mental Dialogue. The show will be live from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. tomorrow morning. I got an entertainment lawyer coming on and a brother who runs a nonprofit for young men or whatever. He agrees with her. Obviously, the entertainment lawyer doesn't, which is how we do things on Mental Dialogue. Let's figure yeah. it out. Real pop. Give us your thoughts tomorrow. Give us your three cents on tomorrow's show. Thank you. Oh, that's going to be good. That's going to be good. Appreciate it, King. Be blessed. I'll talk to you later. Thank you. I love you. All right. Peace.